Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. Um, yeah, so if you've been following along on our personal pages, uh, you might have seen that our cat Babette isn't doing well. Um, and we've been, I was up all night long with her and really haven't slept. Um, so we thought it was just constipation and it would be fine and give her some drops and it would be, you know, work itself out. Um, but apparently she has some issues with her kidneys. So there's some stuff that we have to do for that. Um, normally I would probably take the day off as kind of like a personal day, um, to spend time with Babette and, um, you know, try to keep her as comfortable as possible. William had to switch his work schedule. So he is here now. So I thought I would hop on today and do a tutorial. Um, you know, uh, as a small business owner, a lot of times you can't really foresee a lot of the issues that are going to come up. And even if you plan for things, things have a way of um, not working out according to plan. So, you know, I would like to skip today, but I also, you know, the reality is uh, I can't afford to do it. So, I'm just going to do this tutorial and hopefully it will be nice and then I'll run over to the cottage and um, make some things to sell. So it will help offset some of the expenses of vet's uh, vet uh, bills. Um, somebody asked earlier what the total was. Uh, we don't really know yet because it's an ongoing thing. but. You know, it's like $600 a day and, uh, you know, uh, it gets hard even if you have, you know, care credit and all this other stuff, it, it adds up. Anyway, so let's do something fun. Um, if you've seen my Instagram, you may know that um, I like flowers and um uh, this year we planted, uh, or in the fall, we planted a lot of bulbs. Um, so our yard has a lot of tulips blooming right now and some new fritillaria and some different things like that. Um, and I'm really excited about those. Um, some of the stuff didn't come back from last year, so that's kind of a bummer, but, you know, it is what it is. Um... And we also have a ton of daffodils over at the cottage, which is really pretty right now. Hopefully, they'll continue to keep blooming. Um, but anyways, Mother's Day is coming up this weekend. And I thought it might be nice to do some really fun um, floral components that can be used in jewelry creations. Um, and yeah, so if you like this, there's a bunch of different beads in the online store right now. That's allegorygallery.com. And let me throw the banner up there. Uh, so there's, uh, a lot of beads that could be used in this project. I'm going to be using Briolettes, um, cause I think that they already have a natural kind of teardrop shape. Um, one thing I will caution you is that briolettes, uh, which are basically teardropped uh, shaped beads um, that have a hole running uh, horizontally usually um, in the very tip of, of the, uh, the point, um, is that um, sometimes they can be a little bit fragile. Um, I'm not in my studio right now. I'm actually at home in William's office. So I had to kind of cobble everything together here um, to do the tutorial today. Um, but uh, yeah, so let me flip this camera around and um, we'll get back to it. All right.
All right, so for today's project, we're gonna need some wire. I only had this brass wire with me that I could find easily. This is just some hardware store stuff that I got, it's brass wire. Um, if this is your first time doing this, I would not recommend using brass wire. Uh, brass tends to be a little bit of a tougher metal that can work harden pretty quickly. So it's not ideal for this. Um, ideally, a craft wire would be great for this, or a floral wire would work well. Um, anything that's dead soft, um, dead soft copper wire would be great. Fine silver wire, um, craft wire would be super great. Um, and craft wire comes in all different colors. So if you wanted to do that, um, and you will want to have a thinner gauge. Today I'm using 24 gauge uh, wire, but, and that's pretty much, you know, you can go higher or, or lower rather because the lower the number of the gauge, the thicker the wire. However, it does make it harder. And also sometimes briolettes are not evenly drilled, especially if you're using uh, gemstone briolettes from say India. Um, sometimes the holes are very small um, so you, you can't really do that with, um, the thicker wire unless you want to break your stones. So, um, just try to, uh, use the, a thinner gauge, uh, wire that's super soft and malleable and you'll have, uh, better results. Sometimes when it's thicker like this, it can be, or, or when it's, um, a harder metal like the brass, it can be a little bit problematic. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you want to set yourself up for success and yeah. So we'll also need something to cut our wire. I've got some cutters here. Um, I have my round nose pliers, even though I probably won't need them necessarily. Um, sometimes it helps to have them. I always have uh, a pair of round nose pliers if I'm doing any kind of wire work, just in case. I also have these chain nose pliers. Um, and also I have these bent nose pliers. Now, if you're not familiar with bent nose pliers, these are usually used for opening and closing jump ring. Sometimes it helps if you're trying to get into a place and hold things off to an angle. Um, so I don't know if we'll actually need these or not, but sometimes it's helpful to have them. So, um, yeah. All right. So wire cutters, round nose, chain nose, and bent nose. Um, and if you are curious about any of the tools, um, we do have a selection of tools in the store, the physical store, that's Allegory Gallery uh, in lovely Ligonier, Pennsylvania. And yeah, so those are not listed on our website right now, um, just because Sometimes we can't get them, sometimes we can't, it just all depends. But if you are curious ever about something that you see in one of our videos that you would like to have, um, sometimes we have extra or we have it um, in the store, in the physical location, and um, you all you have to do is send us an email. And I'm going to throw the email up real quick. That's info at allegorygallery.com. And that's a great place to reach us if you need anything. So um, sometimes people will see something and they'll say, oh, it's in the physical store. And they're like, well, I live in North Dakota and I can't go. And how, how come you're showing stuff that's not uh, available online? Well, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of products in store. Um, and it's just hard to have everything in two places at once because say somebody buys it. Um, in the physical store, and then it takes it out of um, the online inventory and it can create a lot of headaches. Or, for example, if there is a limited number of something and somebody buys it online, um, when somebody's trying to check out and be like, oh, sorry, you can't actually buy this thing that you picked out because, um, you know, somebody already bought it. It's kind of annoying. So, we try to keep two separate inventories and we're a super small bead store, so that doesn't always uh, work out. Um, 
but you know, it's, it's worked out so far. So, and if there's any time that you ever need anything or need any help or have any questions, just email us at info at aloragallery.com and we'll take care of you. Um, sometimes it takes a day or two if we have to find out and research and answer for you. Um, and if you haven't heard back, just you can always email us again and be like, hey, just following up. Um, because sometimes we get busy with other things, which is natural. Or sometimes we're waiting to find out answers for something uh, and we don't always know. And we're working on moving the online shipping department over to Star Cartridge Studio. And it's pretty much set up and, and packages are going out every day. However, um, you know, it is the first week that that's been set up like that. So uh, we'll just, you know, it, it'll be interesting to kind of find out um, what we need to move over and what we forgot and what, you know, it's a transition. So bear with us. Um, we thank you for your patience and we appreciate your patronage. And yeah, anyway, so uh, we'll need something to bead or use for our beads. You don't necessarily have to use um, briolettes, but I think they're fun. They already kind of look like petals. These are aquamarine. Um, and I have some, these are jade. But they're they're not an expensive jade. They're like a new jade. Um, but I think that they're pretty. Um, they kind of have one thing that you can figure out about if it's jade or not is jade usually kind of has a milky kind of uh, flavor to it. Um, it's one of the kind of a waxy, milky kind of uh, look. And that's one way that you can tell if it's jade or not. I also have some labradorite. Um, and maybe we'll use this, maybe we won't. Um, so it just depends on what we want to get into and how complicated. I, these ones are smooth um, and these ones are faceted. So I've got a couple different things. Uh, you can probably tell that I like briolettes. I use these frequently in my own uh, jewelry. And you can also tell probably that I like this color palette. That's this muted kind of grayish blue color. Um, let me turn an extra light on so you can see. Um, I don't know if that makes it easier to see or not. Um, anyway, so here you go. There are these different briolettes. I actually have some paint on this one that's from Splattered. Um, but all I have to do is just scratch the extra, the paint that's gone on. Um, all right. So the first thing we're going to do a couple different ways of making these little floral components. Um, and everybody does these differently. There's a book that came out probably 15 years ago. Um, and it's a lot more comprehensive on how to make different florals out of wire and beads. Um, I think it's called French beaded flowers, maybe. Um, those are a little bit more complicated. So this is, I've cut off maybe oh, eight or nine inches of wire. And I don't want to manipulate it too much because if I manipulate it, it will end up work hardening it. So I don't want to work harden this more than it already is. So I'm going to string up one of these jade briolettes and I'm going to cross this over like so. And um, I've got this like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hold this stationary. One of the things people like to do is they, with Briolette or with this technique is they just wanna twist the wire and that's cool and all, but sometimes when you twist the wire, it will um, make this super tight and it will actually break your pieces. So um, you can use your fingers um, after you get it started. 
Um, but I kind of tend to um, not do that. Um, and then the next thing you can do is pull out um, another so that it's kind of like in a V shape. And then we'll string another of these petals, the briolettes. And we'll, we'll cross this over like so. I'm gonna hold this stationary. Oh, I'll put this on this other side. So it's a little bit easier for me. All right. And so I'm gonna hold this stationary while I get this started. And then I can use my fingers to kind of maneuver it. Now, if you want this to be, you can definitely kind of tighten it up by twisting it. You just have to be careful because if you tighten it up too much, what can happen is, like I said, uh, especially in some stones that are super soft, it can get really um, uh, fragile right here at the tip and that can break off. Uh, and that, you know, when you're working on a project, that's sometimes less than desirable. All right. So you're going to keep going around and around um, and uh, filling this up. Now, sometimes you can, if you want this to have less of a um, part uh, stem to your flower, you can have this be shorter. And that is a way that you can also do stuff as well, you know, putting it together. I like to kind of have this be spread out if you're going to combine um, the different stones, um, because that way they can kind of lock into each other. So there's lots of different ways to do this. And like I said, you know, you have to do the one that works out best for you. All right. So I've just put this over like so. And if you wanted to do this with, um, and you can see I just use my fingers with that, it's fine. But if you use your fingers then you end up with this really wide gap here. So there's also that. I'm gonna go back in. And just give it a little bit of a twist. Now, the, it's kind of, yeah, it's uh, tricky because sometimes if you twist it too much, you can actually break your wire. Uh, it's kind of like those twist ties, twisty ties. Um, and uh, so it's kind of, you know, you have to be careful because otherwise if you break your wire, it's not the end of the world. I'll show you actually how to fix that. If you do, I actually, for this project, I probably should have used um, uh, more wire since these are bigger petals, um, but I didn't. So usually if you have smaller ones, you can use a little bit. Um, you don't have to use as long of a piece of wire. All right, so if you're going to add wire the easiest way to do that is to kind of figure out a spot where you're not going to have to run it through the bead. Um, because if you have to run it through the bead, uh, it, it just won't fit generally because it's like two wires. So I'm going to go the kind of closer to this than, um, you know, instead of out here. Because if I go out here, then I have to string the bead over that. So... Um, I'm just going to use this and kind of just twist tie this together to add extra. And then to kind of cinch that into place, I'm just going to, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, just wrap this around and coil it tightly. Now, when you get close to the end of this wire, um, you will want to... Um, tuck it in so you don't end up with any kind of extra janky kind of sharp points sticking out. Um, 
So you just kind of have to work that in there slow and steady. Um, you can use a crimping plier to um, help sometimes if you need to tuck things in like that. Um, but, you know, you can also just practice and that will also help. So I'm just going to um, wrap this and coil this around real quick. And that will cinch that down. Now, if you use one piece of wire, it's a lot easier. So just kind of add wire, mentally do the calculations of how much you need to add um, if you need to. Um, I made a mistake here, so that's how I didn't you didn't accommodate for the the bigger petals. And you can add as many petals as you like. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're duplicating a flower, you know, you just look at the flower and kind of uh, figure that out. You know, if it's got five petals or if it's got more, um, you know, each flower kind of has its own thing. Um, and so it will change. All right. So I'm just going to continue to do this. I'm going to do this two more times. Um, and get this nice and tight around there. So, and that one was a little bit long, but that's all right. So they, it's ideal to have them as equidistant as possible in the same length, but if they're not exactly, then that's all right too, you know? Um, the nice thing about this is that it's supposed to replicate a natural form. So a lot of times natural forms are not completely even all the time and they're organic, quote unquote. So uh, there's that, you know, working in your favor. And a lot of times it's a little bit like eyeballing things but you cross those over. And with Briolettes, generally speaking, uh, I have to be extra careful because I've cracked so many stones over the years. Um, it's just, it's, it's a design kind of thing where that is just like a, a weak spot in your, uh, in this in the stone so you just have to be careful i might actually add more i'll add two more how about that that way it will give a, a little bit of a fuller flower um but uh you know this is a good project I would say you could use this for, for kids. It's not super hard. Um, you just have to be careful because sometimes the wire is sharp and that's less than good. You know, you don't want to poke the children's eyes out. So, um, you know, just be careful. Um, but I remember messing around with wire when I was a kid and I still have both eyes. So, yeah. All right. So once you get to where we're comfortably done and get around as many petals as you're going to add. And when I was a kid, uh, my mom actually had this jade tree that um, was made kind of in a similar way with um, different gemstone and glass flowers kind of um, wired together. And they made this kind of Ikebana Asian uh floral arrangement kind of business, um, which I was always fascinated with. All right. So once you get, you want to leave yourself enough room for a stem 
so that you can wire this on. But you also want to kind of make sure that your pieces are all kind of um, can uh, flare out and be equally. So right now I've reached the where I'm where I'm done adding petals. So this is the end wire, and this end wire is from the original wire. And I've left myself a, a little bit less than an inch in on the end there. And that's so that when I reach the end where I want, I'm done adding petals, I can take this and wire it on to the other side. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that um, it adds a little bit of structure and kind of closes the circle, so to speak, so that um, this isn't like wobbling everywhere around town and it will um, work, you know, it will be a little bit more sturdy. All right, and I can either bend this in like it, and I've done, I've talked about this before, but if you've got the end of a wire poking out, you can tuck it kind of so that it conforms around and it will lock into place with your piece, with your wire so that it's not sticking out. You know, when you, when somebody doesn't trim their wire really close and then it kind of is a sharp point that's sometimes less than good, you know, because it can get caught up on your clothes or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna weave this in, and this is kind of an over-under technique. And I'm moving, um, uh, fairly, it's kind of like with those, what they call those God's eyes when you're making those as kids with yarn popsicle stick. Um, but this will help also reinforce um, the center there. So I'm also going to, another thing you can do is take this wire, which is gonna be the stem when you're done wrapping that around and pulling that through the center and that will help reinforce that, that, that middle you've got going. All right, so it kind of looks like a mess right now, but um, I think it, you know, and this is an opportunity that if you wanted to add more things, say you could make this shape again and then overlap that so that the flowers petals can come up through this. So instead of just describing it, let's just do it. All right, and I'm going to use a little bit longer wire so I don't have to add as much wire. This is maybe 20 inches of the wire. And I'm going to measure this down. So I've got about maybe two inches here. I'm going to string this. Hopefully this fits on here. Um, it does not. Does this fit? this fits. Now one thing that will make your life a lot easier is if you go through your briolettes first and see which ones fit. Um, because sometimes you'll have a full strand of briolettes and only like five of them work. So you kind of have to be mindful of that. Because otherwise, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's not the uh, most glamorous job because you're you're just like testing the whole size. However, I think if you do this before you get started, it does make your life a lot easier because then you'll know exactly which ones will work and which ones won't work. And it's less frustrating when you need exactly one bead left to finish your project. Um, and you know that you have it as opposed to trying to find one in your stash that maybe looks the same or similar and it got met, you know, got lost somehow or whatever. All right. So as you can see here, I have four of these that didn't work, but I also have these that did work. And these ones I'll just save off to the side in case I need them. All right, so I'll measure up about uh, two inches or so and use my fingers as a stop bead. 
Another thing that is uh, good to consider is that if you're using a bead like this, like a labradorite that has chatoyance and um, it's you can see it from one side more than the other, you kind of have to figure out which one is the, the quote unquote better side. And then, um, and you could have probably put this on the other side since it's a shorter side. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, anyway, so you kind of have to figure out which one is the most flashy side and then have that be your top bead. Because if you put the doll side up facing people, then all the goodies kind of lost and then you don't have, you know, It won't be as, as sparkly as it could. All right, I'm not going to um, have this be as long as the other ones. So just keep that in mind. Um, because what I'm gonna, what it, what's gonna end up happening is once I finish this loop, I'm going to, um, fit it together so that it fits like that so that you'll have some of these bigger petals and you'll have these smaller ones towards the center and also there'll be a con a contrast of color so you have these lighter uh, petals and you'll have these darker petals you could also do really small ones and use um, beads that um, don't that aren't briolettes to make stamens and the way that you would do that is you just stack them up. So there you go. Now, like I said, there's lots of different ways to make these floral um, flower components. These would be really good if you were making like a boutonniere or if you wanted to make kind of, um, I've seen people use buttons when they make these kinds of wire flowers. And that's kind of a great kind of like memento. Um, I don't know if your grandma had this or not, mine did, but we, she had a cookie tin. And the in the cookie tin was uh, the button, the button tin. So it's kind of like a fake out if you were searching for cookies because they were they weren't cookies they were kind of sewing notions so um but like i have fond memories like on rainy days we would um get the button tin out and make thing or count them or organize them by color and shapes and it was kind of an activity that we could do um you know, and play around and see who, you know, organize them by size. Um, this is kind of like the precursor to my beading world, I guess. Um, one thing you want to do is not kink your wire too much and also to wire pretty closely to your pieces so that you don't end up with, um, you know, the, the a lot of um, open area for all the petals, but because um, you don't want that to get kind of tangled up and have these big kind of gaps in your wire work, you want to keep them kind of relatively close to your pieces. And um, yeah. And that one I added a little bit extra. Now you do have to be careful not to kink this wire because if you kink it too much, it will create a brittle spot. And the more you kind of work on it, the more it will uh, make it susceptible to breaking. So just keep that in mind so that you don't end up with a piece that is you're almost finished. And then at the last second, uh, it snaps and then you have, uh, you're sad because then, um, you know, your piece that you worked on is now has a, um, a big hole in it. 
So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. All right, and that one was a little bit long. Oh, wow. But this is good if you want to do little boutonnieres or things that don't um, go, you know, that don't go bad. So if you're sending this in the mail to somebody, for example, and you're worried about flowers getting kind of uh, wilted, you know, if you're doing international shipping and whatever, um, this is a good way to kind of do that so that it doesn't, you know, get uh, wilted. Now, if you are going to have them nestle in between, you have to know how many to put. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. So I need two more. And the cool thing is that you can keep doing this. It's very meditative. It's really easy. Um, so it's a very satisfying kind of project, I think. Um, sometimes projects, are, they kind of are um, a pain and you kind of get where you don't want to work on them anymore. Um, but these ones is, you know, you can just, it's just wiring beads on. And it's very, it has a very satisfying feeling to them. So, um, and it's a cool thing to do. Um, you can do sculptural elements to add sculptural elements. Um, if you wanted to use, um, embed these in um, epoxy clay, you could embed these in epoxy clay. Um, if you wanted to make like magnets or something, or you needed something, uh, where it's a sculptural element that you could, you know, if you need this to be like embedded and stuff, then you could do that. Um, all you would do is just mix up your epoxy clay according to the instructions and then um, embed it in there and make sure that the wire is completely kind of submerged in the clay, because otherwise if it's kind of sticking out, it will want to pop out. So, you know, just be mindful of that. So you don't end up with doing all this work and then it pops out. So I'm getting close to the end here. And it is a little bit trickier when you get, um, when you have a lot of these kind of in the way. So, you know, all right. So I've got this wrapped around. I'm gonna attach this to the other side. And then I'm gonna do the over under technique again. Now you can make this suit, you could keep going with this and make little baskets out of this, little beaded baskets. So it's up to you. You would just add wire the way that I showed you in the beginning or close to the beginning. And then put this in there. All right. And if you want, you can twist this together and that'll form a nice kind of, um, it'll lock it in place. Um, I kind of tend to not lock things in place too often just because if I need that extra little bit of wire for something to add something on, um, there's that. Now I'm gonna look real quick to see if the chatoyance is right. And that's the cat's eye effect. And then I'm gonna take this and maneuver it so that these are kind of, it's, uh, it will nestle into each other. And sometimes you have to play around with the placement because sometimes it won't want to, um, to do that. Sometimes it'll want to kind of be um, cockeyed. 
but luckily the wire is kind of um is still malleable So this is what we've got so far. I think that's kind of pretty. Um, it is a little bit more organic. So if you if you want this to be tighter, you could always do this very machine-like and have all the coils be nice and even and whatever. Um, now here is where you have some options. Um, either you could leave it like this and um, maybe wire a stone in the center or do a bigger stone kind of middle. I don't know if I'm going to be able to balance this or not, but you know, you'll, you get the idea. Um, so you could, in theory, make another one. I tend to work in odd numbers. So um, if uh, I think it can be visually a little bit more pleasing, um, but it's, you know, it's up to you. Um, with what you do. So you could do something like that. I think that that covers up too much. Um, so I probably will save these for a different one. Um, in theory, I could put some of these little faceted ones or I could just leave it plain. So there's a couple different options with how we attach these two together. So either we can just wrap these together really tightly here but the only thing, though, is that this has a very wide, has a very big center. So I'm just going to hold these with this bent nose plier. And then I'm going to find ones where they are, like this is longer than this one. So I'm going to wrap this around, if I can get this angled right. And just wrap that around that. And it, it'll be a little bit tricky because these will not want to necessarily um, wrap together very easily. But it is a way that you can combine these so that they don't come apart. Um, it'll also eat up some of that internal kind of um, internal kind of girth of these because you're using up the material to make the wraps. So this is one way that you can do it. Um, and uh, this, they will kind of be off a little bit, but I think that that's all right. Basically, it's like doing a bread tie over and over and over. And as you wrap them, they will get tighter. You can also, if you end up with places where it's visually kind of thick, you can go in with your pliers and manipulate them that way as well. So that you can have, um, so you can get in there really close. So if you can't, if you can't get that bulk, that visual bulk to go down, just get your pliers in and get them like that. Now it can be, it can break the wire, so you have to be careful and it can also break the tips. So that's another place where you kind of have to be mindful of that. And this is, I think this open weave structure is pretty good because then you can do different things um, and add certain elements in the center if you want to. Um, so just keep that in mind as an option. And also you can go in there and really tweak different things by squeezing them shut a little bit. That will help, um, as well. Um, and if also you can help flare things out that way also. So it's just up to you with how you how elaborate you want to make this or less elaborate um, if you wanted like a really groovy cocktail ring you could 
even do that. I'd probably make it a little bit smaller so it's not, you know, ending up in in your food. Um, but yeah, I think that's fun. Now, if you end up with some of these floppy ones, all you have to do is twist it. But again, be careful because the more you twist, the more you're work hardening the wire. So you can do things like that if you want to have something like this. And then this could, if you want to, you can flare this up kind of like in a cone shape. And the wire is probably stiff enough at this point that you could have this be a brooch. You could have this be into kind of um, a little vase. William has these. And then you would just twist this together if you were finished. I'm not finished yet, but if I was finished, I'd twist this all together. And then they could sit kind of like a spray of flowers in this kind of vase. I think I'm going to add a little bit. I'm going to maybe add something in the center. I think it needs something. Maybe not a full set. Maybe just three or something of this larger. I don't know. Maybe something of a contrasting color. I don't know. Now, the other option that you can do, and this is how you get really super bulky. I'll just finish this off. Um, now, it's important to keep, don't over um, wrap your wires because if you over wrap your wires, they can break. And, um, you know, that's not super awesome. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll hold this stationary as one set of pliers, and then I'll use another set of pliers um, to manipulate them. Or you can just do it like a bread tie. In theory, we could just add more wire to this and maybe have um, our center be um, made of wire because that does look pretty, that kind of contrast of that gold. Um, so we'll see. Maybe. I'll put it off to the side for now. All right. So I'm going to cut off um, maybe five inch, six inches of wire. I'm going to bend it over so that you roughly find the center of your piece and then um, string this up. And then when you're doing this, you're going to have them cross over. Whenever you do your briolettes, they kind of have to come up like so. So you'll have this conform to the shape of your briolette. And then right here at this point, you want that to kind of come up um, straight up. And then that way, it's, it will hold it a little bit better. Now, this is where you can, if you have these tight little tips, you can use this to hold them closed. Um, where you can do it like, you know, if you're careful. This is a bigger stone and the, the stones aren't drilled as close to the tip as the other ones, um, but they are pretty, you know, they, there's a healthy distance. So they're not as fragile as some of the smaller ones. Um, and you just kind of twist, twist. Now, when you get towards the end, you'll want to use your pliers so you don't actually nick yourself with the ends of the pliers. Um, and we'll just repeat that again. So you could use these for all different kinds of things. If you did these with a short enough um, uh, 
and you could um, use these for earrings and wire these onto um, a wire wrap loop. And I'm just going to go at regular kind of my speed. And then that way you can kind of see how quickly it goes. Um, this is a super fast thing if you kind of set everything up production style. And then that way, you know, you don't end up um, spending a lot of time hunting for things. That's another thing that wastes a lot of my time is like trying to locate stuff. Um, you can do all kinds of things if you wanted to. I've seen people do kind of a basket weave on top of this and that kind of looks cool too. So I'm just going to repeat this couple more times. Now, another thing you can do is you can always use this as a template to make sure that your stems are all the same size. However, I haven't really found that that really matters too, too much because if you get to the end and there's excess wire, um, you can always just trim it off. So, you know, it's not the end of the world if there's a little bit of extra. These aquamarine look pretty juicy with this brass wire. Um, aquamarine is a barrel, so it's related to like the emeralds. Um, so it's got a different kind of um, look to it. It's got kind of almost like a schist to it, which is kind of cool. I'm just going to wrap this around. So all I'm doing right now is I'm basically making the petals individually. So the other, this technique is where they're all kind of connected. Um, and this one is a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit cleaner because you don't end up, you can get tighter wraps. I mean, I guess you could get tighter wraps with this. I think it looks fun. It just depends on what style you like. Because you could have this one to be, you know, you could have it be more machined looking or you could have it be more kind of organic and kind of a little bit more messy with a wire wrap. It really is just up to you and your personal aesthetic. So you kind of have to decide, you know, and even if you don't decide, you know, it will naturally want to do its own thing. Um, but like I said, these ones are a little bit thicker in the tip, so I'm not being as careful, um, but if you had something that was super soft and kind of breaky, um, then you would want to use something that's a, that's a little bit, uh, you know, use a little bit more finesse. So one more, and then we'll put those together. So this could be really cute as like a boutonniere. Or if you wanted to make earrings that were kind of like in a drop and like a raindrop pattern, that could be really pretty. So, you know, I think sometimes when we do like wire wrapping and stuff, we think of it um, in a very utilitarian kind of way, like this holds us together. Um, but wire is incredibly sculptural medium and you can do a lot of things uh, to manipulate it. Um, if you haven't seen the book, there's um, uh, Alexander Calder, who's known for his mobiles, um, uh, used to also make um, jewelry. Um, and um, he used a lot of wire in his uh, jewelry work because at the time, like uh, during the World War style, I can't remember if it's World War One or World War Two. I think it's World War Two. Um, there were restrictions on sheet metal and different things like that. So um, a lot of his stuff is made from wire, um, and the wire he used in a lot of really wonderful and unconventional kind of ways of working. 
and created some really lovely things uh, using wire. So uh, there's a book and it's called uh, Calder Jewelry or something like that. And um, it's a pretty good book. Now what I'm doing here is I'm, I've got all of my pieces and I'm kind of roughly making them the same uh, kind of same length, um, at least at the top. And then I'll kind of squeeze these together. And this is good when you've got those pliers because you can really hold them. And um, if they come loose, you can always go back and um, twist them with something else. And you could use your fingers. I'm just gonna use these pliers because I have them, so why not, right? Um, at least to get them started. All right, and you could do some sculptural things like if you wanted to make some trees or different things like that. I've seen people do all kinds of like animals and creatures and things like that, and it's pretty cool, but um, you kind of have to practice. Now here, they're not as tight as they could be, so I'm going to hold this with my round nose pliers um, and then just twist these all to kind of gather. And then once I get where they're tight, I can um, um, go in and manipulate them so that they fan out in the right directions. So this is um, this flower. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of cinching these together closer to the base. And if you need to tighten it up, you can always tighten it. But I always get nervous around this time because the wire's been worked um, quite a bit. Um, so if you wanted a simple kind of um, um, flower, you can do that. And if you get towards the end, you can have these ends. You can either trim this at an angle or just kind of wrap these together. And it depends really on what you're making. Like if you're just making this kind of like Ikebanas thing where it's like flower arrangements, then you can just put the, you know, it doesn't have to be like super, you know, it doesn't have to be super um, polished. Uh, however, if you're going to make a piece of jewelry or something, then you kind of need to um, keep, in, keep that in mind um, because you don't want it to scratch uh, the person wearing it or mar the clothes up or whatever. And there's different techniques about how if you want, um, I'm just going to cut off a piece of wire. And I think that that's kind of, it's important to play sometimes because then you kind of get that sense of uh, what's possible. So this is where like the round nose pliers would come in handy. And you can use this to um, hold it and it will kind of act as a um, mandrel for your loops. And then you can just twist this. And that will create kind of this little loop. And then you just do it again. And um, that you can make little stamens for this if you want, or a little micro um, petals. So if you wanted to do that, you can have them all kind of be up here. You can also use this as a technique to, um, to set things. Somebody had mentioned um, 
wanting to uh, wire wrap kind of uh, non-traditional like beads and stuff. And you could use this as kind of like a basket weaving technique um, to do that as well. You just have to be mindful that you're always kind of closing the, the, the loop, as they say, so that the pieces um, are constantly kind of connected and not just kind of like hanging out there. Um, so I've got one, I'll do one more here with this loop technique and then I'll bunch it together so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with making a stamen. Now it does get a little bit trickier when you get to the end, closer to the end of your little flower shapes. And that's because um, it will want to, the other wires will get in the way, you know? So you just kind of have to make it work however you can make it work without them getting too, too much in the way of each other. All right. And then just wire that side on. All right, so this is, I'm going to hold these because I don't want to stab myself. Um, but if you wanted to, you could always capture a stone or something by placing it in the middle of this kind of starfish shape. I don't know if I have anything over here that would work. Um, and um, when you close these up, I don't know if I have anything that would work off the top of my hand, but top of my head. But when you, you'd put it in the center and you'd flare these up so that it is holding it like so. And then you take, to close this, you take a jump ring and have them all kind of connected and it will make a cage. So if you wanted to cage an item, you could do that. So that's one way that you can do that. And then on this side, you just make a loop or whatever. But this is a cool way if you want to then take those little loops and then flare them out like so. And... Um, you can have this be as sculptural as you want it to be. So you can, you just have to kind of play around with the wire. But that would look really cute, kind of in the middle of that. And you can always stack them so that they, you know, they reinforce your design. You know, you can play around with it. And also, you you know, you just have to play around with it. If it doesn't look good, we can always take it off. So if you wanted to do something like that, where it's kind of sculpturally in there and is, creates that, those stamens, you can do that. Now there is a product that you can dip these in if you have these loops. Uh, it smells super bad. I can't remember the name of it, um, but it, it creates almost like a little uh, meniscus or whatever. So it makes almost like a, a faux uh, plicajor. Um, it's not called dip and dots. I can't remember the name, but um, basically you just dip those in and it fills in those cells. So you could do that. Um, and we'll just make a little arrangement here, a little wired arrangement. Um, another thing you can do is make branches. I'm actually gonna cut off more. So this is like maybe 20 
inches or so of this wire. And I'm going to want to form a kind of a, a roundish base, but I don't have anything to measure it. So I'm just gonna form this over like so, and then wrap it around. And this looks super wavy gravy style right now. When you get to the end, you'll want to not use your fingertips because you can cut yourself um, with the end of the wire. So just be mindful of that. Um, but so this is super wavy gravy style, but you can always get something that's round and that's too big. And you just kind of slide that down until it kind of creates a mandrel. And then it's much more round. And if you had a hammer or whatever, you could use this to um, uh, a, a plastic hammer and maybe a piece of wood. You could use this to work hard in this loop so it doesn't move. Um, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this wire up approximately, oh, half an inch or so. And look at this faceted one since I have them here. And string this on. One thing I do recommend is if you're interested in duplicating like botanicals, uh, the best thing to do is to look at botanicals. Um, and then that way you're actually seeing the structures. And so when you go to duplicate them, you'll be much more successful um, when you look um, at what you're trying to uh, recreate as opposed to, um, you know, in our minds, we have this idea of what things look like or should be. Um, but the best thing to do, especially as an artist, and you're trying to duplicate them from life, is to just look and use your eyes and um, or your fingers and, and use the, your senses to experience the forms that you're trying to recreate. And you just kind of weave these around. And like I said, you can be as precise or imprecise as you want. So if you want these to be like, this is a much more tighter wrap than this one. So it's just up to you on what you kind of want this to look like. Um, sometimes I like to have that kind of organic flow to um, my pieces. I like that kind of, it almost replicates that sense of a gnarled um, tree branch. Um, but sometimes I want it to be more clean and a little bit more modern. Um, so I will use, I will uh, wind these a little bit tighter but it's a it's a fun way i think it's fun to just let the it's uh what is that walt whitman he says sometimes you have to let um a line go for a stroll or whatever it's got to go for a walk take the line for a walk or maybe that's john singer sergeant i can't remember somebody some famous artist dude um uh, and so anyway, sometimes you can just do that with wire and see where it will take you. Um, and you can just play around and look at nature and be inspired by it. Sometimes when people talk about nature and they say, oh, I'm inspired by nature, I kind of always roll my eyes and because it's such a kind of, I don't want to say it's a cop-out answer, but I hear it. 
so often. I used to sit on a board for a grant, um, a grant proposal uh, committee, and I would hear people say, I'm inspired by nature, I'm inspired by nature, I'm inspired by nature. And it's like, what exactly about nature are you inspired by? Are you inspired by um, the colors that are found in nature? Are you um, inspired by the repetition or the organic kind of beauty? Are you inspired by where you live in the co or where you are geographically and how that sense of place influences your work. I notice that when I'm in the desert, like when I'm in Tucson, my color palettes are way different than if I'm here at home. I have a, a different color palette sensibility uh, than I do when, when I'm traveling. So there's all different things that are more specific. Are you and, you know, there, there's a lot of ways, you know, nature is a big, vast thing. And so when you say that you're inspired by nature, you know, that's cool. But what exactly about nature inspires you? You know, I think you're doing yourself a disservice as an artist if you kind of leave it as amorphous. And maybe that's the thing is like, you don't like, I, I just think about it as people just don't know how to really articulate uh, their work and that's fine uh, but you'll end up with problems like well, how do you how what exactly about these things when you're talking about your other work besides just nature um, how how does that impact uh, the final work like out uh, you know, when you're not out by a stream and absorbing the babbling brook, like how, how do you describe that when somebody can't, for example, see it? Um, you know, it's when the only way that they can uh, experience it is through your words, you know, um, nature has different connotations for everybody. Somebody who grew up in the inner city is going to have a very different uh, lexicon of um, and meaning behind nature than somebody who grew up on a farm. So you kind of, I you know, I, I I hate to talk about things like that because I know that they they're they're not. Um, you know, it can sound kind of mean when I'm, but really, it's how it's how do you phrase things so that other people can understand what, you know, so that they can pick up what you're throwing down, basically, what you're putting down. All right, so we've got a little bit of a wonky one here, and I'm gonna just tighten that up real quick. Oh, and I broke that one. So there you go. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're messing with these braillettes because sometimes, like I just did, you can break them. If you happen to have a time machine, you can always uh, look up. Um, I did a tutorial on how to um, use those broken pieces on the show called Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels. Um and so you can see that it's basically just jamming this into some epoxy putty or epoxy clay and embedding a wire loop in it um, and then texturing it. So that's a way that you can salvage that. Um, but, you know, so here you go. Um, and this structure is inspired by a floral but it also has a very contemporary kind of mid-century modern vibe. Um, and really you, you can go um, as intricate or as not as you want. So if you wanted to add more flower shapes to these and make this very floral, you could also make this very floral and lay these out. Another thing is good that you can do is sketch. I find it helpful to draw out my design sometimes 
and then I can kind of see what I'm trying to create. And then if I see what I'm trying to create, then I can, uh, then I kind of have a roadmap of where I want to go. You know, if you're just kind of free flowing, then it makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, in some ways, sometimes it's good. You can kind of just vibe and come up with stuff. Um, and then sometimes if you know what you want to make, then it makes it a little bit easier. So if I wanted to do something like this, then I know that I can just wire on. I just attach this, attach a wire to this. And to do that, I'm just going to attach a small piece because I'm not actually going to use this is you take your wire and you take your round nose pliers and you come down about an inch or so and you bend that over so it makes a little kind of hook and then whenever you need to add the wire you put that hook and you catch your base like that and then you can take this and wire that on I like to use the pliers because I can get really tight. And say you don't want to wrap anymore, you can always trim it. When you trim it, hold it away from your eyes so it doesn't flick in your eye because that can happen and then you'll be sad. So, here's that and you can wire something else on this um and another thing that you can do is if you need this to be a base you can wrap these flowers these other flowers onto maybe get a smaller one and wrap this on and you can create a very lush kind of um arrangement so it just depends on you and what you want to do, and how um, how much of a flower you want to make it, or how organic you want to make it, it's really up to you. All right. So we've made a bunch of different things. Um, I encourage you to play with a wire, and um, you know, look at nature, look at those flowers and floral shapes, look at the petal shapes, draw those out. Look at the petals from different shade, um, different angles, because sometimes if you hold it, you know, this way, it's going to have a different vibe than if you hold it this way. So if you are, you know, it's all about exploring those, um, those natural forms. Um, and then if you're trying to duplicate those, you know, then you can, you can play around with that. But so this is kind of a quick little primer on making wired flowers with briolette beads. If you don't have briolettes, you can use other beads. You just kind of see the wire a little bit more and, um, you know, that's up to you. But again, if you have something like this, I think this is really exciting because if you have these really long pieces, then you can like do basket weaving in this and you can really create some interesting forms. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's kind of cool. And also you don't always have to do everything like center center. So if you wanted to have this and have it be off centered, have it be off centered and, you know, how, maybe that's something you know, kind of play around with it so you can overlap the shapes and understand how they kind of fit together or don't fit together. All right, I hope you all had fun. If you do use any of these techniques and would care to share what you made, we have a Facebook group. The Facebook group is called Allegory Gallery Design Challenges. You can always share your creations there. If you ever have any problems and you're like, oh, I'm stumped, I don't really know what to do, you can always go and ask everybody in the group and say, hey, what do you think about this? And folks are really generally super happy to help. Um, 
And yeah, so hopefully you all have a great rest of your week and you had a good start to your week. Um, if you saw the beginning of this video, you know, it's been a little bit of a challenge for us here. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm not super as excited. You know, usually I try to be a little bit more entertaining uh, during these videos. Uh, but we're, you know, we're going through some stuff with one of our of our cats and it's really hard. And so, you know, I did want to be here. So, you know, it's it's always good to have consistency whenever you're doing something for your business. Um, and if we kind of keep calling out, then people are gonna stop watching and we're, I, I don't really want to do that. So anyways, I hope you all had fun, even though it was a little bit more of a challenge today uh, than normal. Um, and maybe I'll post this. Oh, and I have the drawing somewhere that I started last week. Um, I don't know where it is because William cleaned his office. So um, I'll have to look around for that. Um, I worked on it a little bit more, but we've been super busy. So I didn't get a chance to uh, really flesh it out as much as I would have liked. But, you know, it is what it is. That was just so that you get familiar with that technique. So if I don't have this masterpiece at the end, um, then, you know, that's okay, too, because sometimes, um, you know, that started off as just as kind of like a demo and isn't something that I'm, like, deeply passionate about. Anyways, hopefully you have a great rest of your week. I'm just going to sign off because I look pretty tired and a little bit rough today. So um, I'm not going to focus on my face again. All right. See you later.